So welcome to NX for Manufacturing tech, tech Tips. Today's tech tip is on displaying and analyzing CMM measurement results right in NX uh, with the NX CMM inspection application. Demonstration today will last approximately 20 minutes and then we'll stay on the line and open up the chat window for Q&A. With that, I'll turn the session over to Steve Sigliano. Welcome, Steve. Let's get started. All right. <clears throat> very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Derek. Uh, just, uh, just a brief introduction and then we'll dive into the actual demonstration today. So what I'm going to show you today is some new capability that we've included in NX CMM Inspection Programming 851, which will be released uh, early next year. Um, so we have the ability to uh, read in measurement data into NX CMM Inspection Programming and display the measurement data uh, on the, in the graphical window so you can see it in the graphical environment. Um, you also have the ability to use a wide variety of analysis options to uh, determine the cause of part failure and to look at possible uh, corrective actions. And uh, you also have the ability to generate um, some standard uh, text reports as well as outputting uh, standard, the measurement results in a standard format such as uh, Excel or uh, an XML based format called DML. So what I'm going to do today is uh, show you a couple of different use cases of how we can use uh, NX CMM inspection programming analysis uh, to perform all of these activities. Um, so let me just uh, go ahead and bring up uh, my NX session. Okay, so what we're going to start with is a CMM inspection program uh, that's already been completed for uh, th for this uh, impeller part. And uh, what we do is we've added two additional uh, uh, buttons inside of uh, NXCMM. Uh, the first is to load measurement data. So at this point we can now uh, navigate uh, to the to our measurement data that's been uh, created on the shop floor by running by running the uh, by running a, a CMM to collect the measurement data. We support a couple of different formats of data. One is a, a, a text-based format called uh, an MEA file, which is uh, generated by our CMM inspection execution uh, software. We also support the ability to read in measurement data using an industry standard uh, format called DML. Uh, in this case here, I'm going to use an MEA file because I've uh, used inspection execution to generate some, uh, some test data. Um, we also have several options for uh, the display of the measurement data and uh, the kind of information that we're going to see. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we'll, we'll turn on the display of measurement points and the reconstructed features. So as we read the measurement points in, uh, we actually um, reconstruct all of the features, all of the cylinders, cones, planes, uh, and surfaces, and whatnot. Um, when we uh, look at the tolerances, um, we could also have quite a bit of control over the amount of information that's displayed. Um, similar types of information such as the reconstructed features and uh, the measurement points. We also have the ability to display deviation needles uh, for surface profile gauges. And if we do have the needle display, we can control the size. So uh, for this set of measurement data, I'm going to uh, uh, display needles for profile gauges and uh, display the measurement points. So as we uh, so as we load the data, we, uh, it immediately does an analysis using our uh, computational metrology engine to compute all of the features and evaluate all the tolerances. Now in this case here, we read in about uh, 2,500 points and you can see it took about one second uh, to analyze all of, the, uh, all of the features and tolerances with that amount of data. You can uh, now see that we have these two columns, the measurement status and the deviation columns in the operation navigator filled in. So the, uh, these icons here give you an indication of the state of the, of the feature. Uh, a red X means that the feature failed, a green check means that the feature passed. Um, a little black dot means that there was measurement data, but there were no uh, tolerances assigned to that particular feature. Uh, likewise, for the, uh, for the tolerances, uh, we use the same uh, the same icons, uh, X meaning that the tolerance failed, and green checks means means that it passes. So we can now uh, begin highlighting the tolerances 
in the operation navigator and what I and you let me just pick an interesting one here uh, so this particular uh, this particular tolerance failed it was a profile tolerance on the surface of this impeller and you can see that we have uh, displayed uh, needles which represent the amount of deviation of each of the individual points uh, in this display here uh, the yellow needles indicate that the uh, the point is uh, away from the material in other, in other words there's too much material and we use the color yellow to indicate that uh, you could possibly fix this part or fix that point by uh, some additional machining operations or grinding or whatnot to actually remove the excess material uh, the red needles indicate that those points are into the material and so you would either, either have to add additional uh, material or it's possible that this part uh, would not be uh, would not be repairable you can control the uh, the magnitude of the needles just by changing the needle scale and so for example here I can actually make this uh, 100 and you can see the needles uh, immediately uh, respond to the to the change in the display so you can go through each of the each of the various features and uh, and look at the and look at the features and we we do give you a graphical display of the features so for example here we have a we have the cylinder and we actually reconstruct uh, a indication of the actual measured size compared to the to the nominal size the deviations here represent the deviations of the tolerance um, so you can see as we go through this is a metric part so in this case you can see each of these tolerances uh, for the most part have a deviation of less than uh, about a tenth of a millimeter except of course the one that failed you can uh, control the way that the uh, features are analyzed uh, we added uh, new uh, data entry fields for the tolerances so what I'll do is I'll edit this particular tolerance here so we now allow you to specify the various analysis modes that can be used to analyze these tolerances uh, as well as control the degrees of freedom of the of the analysis and uh, these parameters are uh, are saved in the model with the part program and when you actually generate your uh, your DEMAS program uh, these settings will come out in the DEMAS program so uh, these are used not only for uh, the analytics but is also used uh, to as part of the, the program creation uh, the uh, the analysis methods uh, our options are inherited from methods so we have a, a, a default method here which uh, you can use to establish all of your analysis options uh, that are used and these are stored in the template uh, that you use to create the, to create the inspection program in the first place so you can use this to establish your uh, your corporate standard for your analysis uh, options put them in the templates and that way you're, you're sure that they are used for all of your inspection programs at this point we can now uh, generate uh, some t uh, text reports so we have the ability to uh, to output uh, text in uh, uh, with a simple text report and you have some control over how much information is uh, is generated um, I'm going to use just a simple report here and so in this case here this is just a summary report of the of the features and, uh, and tolerances whether they passed or failed you can of course get a very uh, detailed report and I'll show you some examples of that uh, later on in the in the in the demo here uh, you also have the ability to uh, export the operation navigator to a spreadsheet so by doing that you can then uh, uh, output what you see here quickly we'll so that same information that you see in the operation navigator can be exported to a spreadsheet so you could use this to generate um, some standard reports uh, for your uh, for your company uh, the next thing I want the <clears throat> next thing I want to show you is how you can <clears throat> how you can actually use uh, the analysis capability to uh, determine some corrective action for uh, for a part that's actually failed so here we in this case here we have a uh, 
uh, a housing part that we've created an inspection program for. And we'll load the measured data that we have. So in this case, we see that uh, that the uh, that most of the features and tolerances on the part have failed, except for the position tolerance on uh, these patterns of features. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go in and do a deep dive and look at these at these features and to try to determine exactly what uh, what could be the cause of the failure of these of these features. So first, what I'll do is I'll highlight the the pattern of these larger holes, and we can go in and, uh, and look at these uh, holes graphically. And we can see that, uh, that the measured size of these features are, are very close, if not identical, to the, to the nominal. Uh, so now that would seem to indicate that the features, the measured features, are not necessarily the problem in this case. So now we'll start examining the datums that are used in the position tolerance. And uh, we'll highlight the uh, the secondary datum. And we will see excuse me here. There we go. We zoom in on the on this feature here. We can then examine it graphically, and we can see that the measured feature represented by the uh, blue cylinders actually shows quite a bit of deviation from the uh, from its nominal location. So in this case, we can now display the uh, the tolerance itself along with the representation of the of the datum reference frame, and in this case. Here we'll turn on the datum reference frame for the design datum reference frame and the me and the measured datum reference frame, and we can see that there's actually quite a bit of shift. Now these uh, coordinate systems here represent the uh, the coordinate system that is constructed from the datum features. So in this case here we have a plane and two holes, uh, which establishes the uh, the datum reference frame uh, uh, where the z-axis is perpendicular to the primary plane and then the data reference frame is located at this uh, at this the center of this tertiary hole and by being able to graphically display these datum reference frames we can see that there's uh, that there is quite a bit of, of datum shift so that would lead us to believe that uh, that the problem has to do with the manufacture of the datums as opposed to the manu the manufacture of the of the actual holes that are being controlled by the datum. So what we can do at this point is that we can verify this, uh, this by going into controlling the degrees of freedom of this particular position tolerance. And by, well, just real quickly, I'll go back here to, to the display of this. Looking at the datum reference frame, we can see that the hole is, uh, is off in the y direction of the datum reference frame. So what we're going to do is we will actually allow the uh, datum reference frame to, to move dynamically while we're doing our fitting of the tolerance in the y direction. So we'll actually turn this, um, this degree of freedom on in our, uh, in our tolerance here. And we'll go back and this will, it will now automatically update the value of the tolerance and you can see that the tolerance now passes. So th what this uh, does is this validates our uh, proposition that the datums have actually shifted during the manufacturing process. So what you would do now then is go back to your manufacturing plan and look at what operation it was that, uh, that actually made this particular feature to understand what might have changed or caused this problem. I mean, for example, you could have got, had uh, some new fixturing uh, in place on the line, which uh, caused the uh, the blank to uh, to be out of position during the manufacturing of this particular uh, particular uh, feature. Uh, so you can use then then you can actually correct your your manufacturing process. 
So this shows how you can use this tool uh, to determine what is, uh, what is wrong with a part that's failed. Now going one step further, we want to say, well, how can we make sure that we make good parts in the, in the first place? So this, in this next example here, uh, I have a, a casting of the impeller, and we now want to uh, determine the optimum uh, location of the casting relative to the machining process. We want to balance the amount of material removal uh, on the, the cutting of the, of the blades of the impeller uh, so that we have a, a uniform material removal and to make sure that we have enough material removal. And we're simulating that by uh, putting on a surface profile tolerance on the, uh, the pattern of all these blade surfaces. So we have some, uh, some measurement data here for this particular, uh, for these particular castings. And just look at the right, get the right data here. So the way that we've uh, constructed the surface profile is that we, we've specified the surface profile option to force all of the measurement data away from the nominal, the nominal features, the, the, the surface of the nominal features. So we want all of the measurements to be outside and we want it to be balanced all the way around the, uh, the blades here. And you can see in this particular case, the, uh, our, the way that we specify the tolerance, it actually fails. We want to have a, a, a one millimeter uh, boundary outside the casting. So once again, we can use our uh, degrees of freedom and we can simulate um, actually putting in some shims on the, uh, on the setup. Um, and because we're shimming, we're just going to try to, we're just going to look at uh, translations. So what we'll do is we'll turn on translations for this particular case. And we'll let it go. And we can now, we now get uh, less than a millimeter, which is our desired objective. And we can then look at the at the uh, the tolerance report for this, and make sure that and we can then that will actually tell us what we have to do. So by looking at the uh, this text report here, we, what we get is we get a tra how we get um, a, a description of how much the software actually had to move the measured data to fit onto the nominal data. So in this particular case here it had to uh, translate a negligible amount in X and Y, but by uh, translating up in Z by uh, about two tenths of a millimeter, it would then bring the, uh, the uh, casting into an optimum location for uh, the, the machining process, this final finishing process. So that we now have manufactured the blades, uh, we'll now manufacture the part correctly. So what I've shown you here today is the ability to uh, read in measurement data and display uh, measured features graphically uh, inside of NX and of course get a, a, a status of the of the various features and how, and I've also shown how you can use some of the analysis tools to uh, both diagnose problems with your manufacturing process and also to improve your manufacturing process so that uh, you can ensure that you can make good parts. Thank you very much, Steve. That was fantastic. I think we all learned a lot. Uh, we'll see you next time on NXCAM 20-Minute Tech Tips.